Hey guys, and welcome back to SLVGG 101. So you know what time it is and you know what date it is. So it could only mean one thing. A once upon a time review, a recap, a whatever. Okay, so let me start off by saying, if you are not into spoilers, I suggest you stop, push this video on pause, open up a new tab, check out my giveaway video, watch that, Catch up on Once Upon a Time, and then Ravine with this review. So, with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's get into tonight's episode. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, last week I was not too captivated at all until it got to, like, the end in the preview of this week's episode. So, just kind of, like, going a little bit back. So, last week's episode was basically the whole story of, like, Rumpelstiltskin and his deal with the voodoo doctor and finding out that Belle is pregnant. So they didn't even talk anything about that in this episode. Not at all. This episode was focused around really Hook and why he just feels like he is not worth saving. In this episode, we are introduced, well, reintroduced to Liam, who's Hook's brother. And we find out the relationship between Liam and Hook and the correlation to why Hook feels like he is just not worth saving. We are also reintroduced to the plot of Cuella wanting Henry to help her get back to Storybrooke through the writing of The Quill. I don't remember if I talked about that in another episode or anything like that, but basically just kind of going into that, um, Koala cornered Henry and kind of said, you know, if you find the quill, because when you broke it, it just put it down here. If you find it, then you can write me back to our world and mummy dearest who killed me wouldn't have any guilt and she can just go home too. So she was basically just kind of playing him. So we kind of revisit this with Henry trying to find the quill. So there's a lot of new elements that are being placed. And the best of all element is that Hades has a story, which we all know because every fairy tale has a story that he doesn't want anyone to know about. And somehow this story correlates to my new favorite love to hate villain, Zelina. So let's get more in depth about this episode. So basically in this episode, Hook is still just like, I am not good enough. And Emma is just keeps constantly saying you are good enough but you have to believe that you're good enough and you know he's all busted up and bruised and Emma just uses her light magic and she she makes him better and we're introduced to Liam so Liam is is presented to us on a platter of being just this perfect ideal person but we're not dumb and neither is Emma. We all can tell just ba just based on the way that he's presented that there's something really off about him so, you know, he takes Emma aside. They've decided to join forces, pretty much, and to defeat Hades. And what Liam wants Emma to do is, after they defeat Hades, she wants Hook to just go, to just move on. Liam doesn't feel like Emma's good enough. He feels as though Emma is being selfish with, you know, trying to save him and just the whole situation that he was in. She was being selfish and what she did. So Liam makes it very clear in the very beginning of the episode that he does not like Emma. Meanwhile, while, you know, all that's going on, Henry is riding in cars with Cruella, and, you know, Cruella's like, you need to find the quill, you are connected to the quill, so the quill will always show itself, blah, 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 blah. They're riding through, like, ever notice how they're always riding on a road that's just surrounded by, by forest? Thought it was just me. But they're riding through forest and he sees a glimpse. So he's like, stop, I saw something. So they walk through the forest and Quella's like, I don't know what the heck you saw, but I ain't seen nothing but dirt. And if you see something, you need to move your scrawny little legs and find this pen, all right? So the glimmer wasn't actually the pen. The glimmer was actually the apprentice. And of course the apprentice is in Underbrook. So of course Henry wants to know, why are you in Underbrook? What's your unfinished business? And the apprentice lets him know, my unfinished business is you. Now Henry wants to find the quill in order to rewrite the whole entire story so that way him and his family can get back, which is against the rules of being the author. So the apprentice is saying, I never told you that you can bring someone back from the dead or from the underworld, because I never thought that it would be something that you would be tempted by. Which, as the apprentice, I'm not really sure how he didn't know that. 
but maybe I'm misthinking what he is. Man, I right. So he's like, my unfinished business, I can't cross over and my unfinished business be done until you make the right decision. If you make, I can't tell you what to do, but if you make the right decision, then I can move on and like live my life like it's golden. Okay. So he disappears. And, oh, no, before he disappears, he lets Henry know that it's in the author's house, but it's guided by magic, and Evil Charming, which I think his name is Adam, no, James, that's his name, James. So Evil Charming, aka James, has the key. So Henry goes back with this little tidbit of information and they have all decided based upon the information that he has that obviously Hades must have a story. So now they're looking for the book and they have decided that the book is probably in the apprentices. I mean, I'm sorry, in the author's house, the original author, right? So they formulated this plan that this is what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to find this key. Okay. And we are going to get the book and we're going to find Hades' story and we're going to conquer him. So this was the plan. Everything was all said and done. Everything was well. Now, mind you, throughout the whole entire episode, they're doing flashbacks of what went on between Liam and Hook and how everything came about. And so basically, they were like cleaners on a ship to another captain. And the captain like just cheated them out of getting all their free stuff. So Liam was really good. But as you can tell, there's just something not right. If he was really all that good, he wouldn't be an underbrook. He wouldn't have unfinished business again. Insert Casper thoughts. <laughs> so, of course, while the story is going through, we find out. Like, we're seeing this backstory and everything else. And Liam was honorable up until this point. So, back in underbrook, underbrook Liam is a bartender. And he's cleaning up the bar, and Hades appears, and he's like, what do you want? And he's like, well, there is a book, it does have my story, and nobody needs to know that, so I need for you to get my story. And Liam's very, very defensive towards Hades, which anyone would be because he's Hades, but it was more like a personal offense kind of a thing and this is where all the suspicion of what is going on with Liam comes to fruitation so Liam's like do it yourself he's like um that house is protected by light magic light magic and I are not friends so you gotta do it and he's all like what if I choose not to he's like then your brother's gonna find out the truth of what your unfinished Biz Nos is. So then it goes back to the clip of them being on the boat with the ship. And basically, the captain of the ship that they were pretty much slaves to wanted them to ride into the eye of the storm to catch this, this gem that is supposed to be a myth because no one's ever been able to capture it. So basically... When they find out that this is what's happening, Liam goes into straight-up superhero mode, and he snatches the sword from them, and he's like, this is not what's going to happen. What's about to not happen is you are not about to kill all of us because you have a death wish, okay? You can do your suicide mission on your own. We ain't doing that. Not today. So... He goes down. So, of course, so the captain's like, whatever. He surrenders at this point. And Liam goes down to the ship to find the maps to try and figure out how they can get themselves out of this. While they're trying to figure it out, boom, and pops Hades, because Hades, like every villain, every good villain, is an opportunist. So Hades comes in, and he's like, Um, is this what you're looking for? And he, like, shows this this stone that they've been, like, trying to find or whatever the case may be. And he's like, You have what I want and I have what you want. All I need you to do is ride this ship right into that storm and give me all those lost souls. And I'll make sure you and your brothers survive and you get this gem and you get everything that you've been wanting. So, Liam, I think he did it with a heavy heart, but he agreed to it and he rode them right into the eye of the storm and he played on the fact that Hooked really looked up to him and Hooked believed in him. 
And he got Hook on him side, which in turn, Hook being the chivalrous manly man that he is, got the rest of the crew members on his side, and he, uh, like, led them off into their death. So now he has to finish his bidding to Hades. So they find the mansion. Oh, first, this is like a side interesting note. So Snow and Charming sneak into the sheriff's office, which is owned by his evil twin charming brother James they get the key and um Cruella comes in and it's revealed that Cruella has this intense relationship with James apparently and Charming has to play it up while Snow sneaks off and gives the key to the gang and it's revealed because Cruella does know that it's not really James that's actually Charming and she goes along with it until Charming's just like I can't do this anymore like you're just you're really freaking me out here and um, it's revealed through Cruella that James, even though he was given to the king, I'm not going to go into that story because that's literally from like season one, maybe season two, but it's revealed that even though he was given to the king and his wife and he had this life of grandeur while charming had a poor life living on a farm with his mom, he never understood why his mom gave him up. And that David actually got the better end of the stick because their mom loved him. And even though he wasn't raised with much, he was raised by someone who loved him and who wasn't driven by power and money like his adopted father, the king, was. So now he has this vendetta against David because his mother chose him over James. So, yeah, that's a side note that we just had to bring in because that was, like, a really interesting fact. So, moving right along and forward into the story. So, they go into the, the, oh my gosh, what's his name? The author's house. <laughs> wow. They go into the author's house and they find the book and as he is instructed to do, Liam rips the pages out. Um, Emma confronts him and, you know, at this point, uh, Emma's like, I just, I don't get it. What are you up to? I know you're up to something, blah, 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 blah. And Liam's like, nope, not at all. In walks, uh, Hook. And Hook can tell that there was some kind of tension between Emma and Liam and that Emma was a little bit off. So after Liam walks off, Hook approaches her on it. And Hook is just like, yo, what's going on with you? Like, I know you. No one knows you better than me. I know something's bothering you. And she's like... I'm just getting a really bad feeling about your brother and he's hiding something. And of course, Hook hops to the fence because to him, Liam was like, Liam was like his charming, you know? He was the brother that was just so perfect. And Liam was one person, aside from Emma Swan, that I think Hook never wanted to disappoint and always wanted to just try and, 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 and make him proud. But it just seemed like no matter what he could do, he just always did it wrong. And so, you know, Hook is like, I don't want to hear it, blah, 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 blah. So Hook leaves. So Liam goes and he is all like, he's like near a well or whatever, near the house. And he drops the pages into the well. And Emma, again, confronts him. And she's like, I don't understand what your problem is. Hook is worth saving. He just needs to know it. Blah, 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 blah. And so Hick walks... Hook. Hick? Who's Hick? I don't know. But Hook walks in. And Hook is like, what's going on? And he's like... Ugh. Emma's like... Look, there's really something not right about your brother. And Hook is like, just Emma, get off of it. Honestly, just, you know what this is about. It has nothing to do with my brother. It has to do with you and I. And Emma's like, wait, what? What, what are you talking about? Like, I can prove that he just put those pages down the well. Like, look at his hand. And Liam really did bank on the fact that Hook believes in him and trusts him. So Hook is like, I don't need to look at my brother's hands. You just need to stop. And Emma's like, you know what? I'm done. Like, she didn't say I'm done, but she pretty much, like, in her speech was just like, I'm done. She was like, basically, you are the only person that needs to believe that you need to be saved. No matter how much I tell you that you're worth saving, no matter how much I tell you that you're worth it and that I know you're worth it, it doesn't matter unless you see it. And I was just like, yes, Emma, yes, you like Hook now. So Emma walks off. 
after Emma walks off, like, less than 30 seconds, all these guys come up, and it's like, I'm sorry, are we in, like, the Warriors right now? Like, where did y'all come from? And it happened to be the captain of the ship from the previous story, and all the, the merry men, or the crew, the crewmen, and they let Hook know what, like, what happened, and they tell him, you know, your brother led us to our death, and he's fulfilling this deed with, like, Hades. That's why he's here. And Hook is like, what? Tell me that's not true. And Liam's like, I'm so sorry. So they're like, well, it's time for you to pay the debt. So uh, let go. So he takes them to, you know, that long plank. We'll just use it as a plank. The long plank where, you know, the fiery pits of hell are. And they're about to push all of them off, saying, you were supposed to die with us, so wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, deuces. And Hades appears, and he's like, um, mm, this is my realm. You don't send anybody to my fiery pits without my permission. So guess what, boo-boo? Now you get to go. <sighs> he blows, and whoosh, the captain goes down. So, now he's like, Guess what? You kind of broke the deal. Okay, so now you're going to go. So, he goes, <sighs> because, like, you know, he's like the big bad wolf where he huffs and puffs and he blows people off this plank. And Liam goes backwards and Killian jumps and grabs his hand. And Liam does the most chivalrous thing, which was something he should have done in the beginning. He said, I am so sorry that I am not the brother. Because, okay, I forgot to mention something really important. So while the captain and the merry men were pushing them off, Liam and Hook exchanged words and Hook expressed, you made me feel like I had to live up to this, to this standard of perfection that was never attainable and you weren't even perfect yourself. Like, how dare you? So that was like the last words or whatever before they were supposed to die. So as Hook is holding on to his brother, he's like, his brother tells him, you know, I'm really sorry that I, I gave you these deluded does these delusions of grandeur about who I was and and Hook is like it doesn't matter like hold on brother because you know they're, they're like old English and it's like hold on brother and you know his his brother is like no I need to pay for what I did and he lets go of Hook's hand and he goes to like drop to the fiery eternal depths of hell and all of a sudden mind you Hades is here watching the whole entire thing all of a sudden it gets light, a sky appears, an ocean, with, a, with, with, I guess, the Jolly Roger appears, and Hades is like, No! And Hook is like, what the flip no squad? What is happening? So, his brother comes up on, like, a dinghy, and basically what happened was he accepted his punishment, and that gave him the freedom to move on to heaven and hook then has the epiphany that he is worth saving you know his brother had done all these things to ensure that he had a future and he told emma i'm gonna make sure that i get that future so after we defeat hades we're going home and we're gonna start that future that we're supposed to have together and the episode ends with hades finding the pages and the best part is we see zelina oh my goodness so, this was a very, very good episode. I enjoyed it a lot. I will say that this episode is so intense with the heaven and hell. Um, it's very interesting how it's like a play on the Bible. If you read the Bible or if you're familiar with, you know, um, biblical stories, it's very interesting how they play on the heaven and the hell and how you get to heaven and how you get to hell without directly using the actual, like, biblical reference so i find that very interesting um but it's very intense this 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 half of this season it's it's i feel like the show in general yes it's an intense show but for the most part it's very lighthearted because it's still very fairy based but this is some real intense episodes and and i'm actually looking forward to see how it continues so that's it for this episode. It was so much easier to talk to you guys about this episode because I really, really, really enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share because sharing is caring. I post videos for sure every Sunday and every Tuesday.
I am going to be doing a giveaway once I reach 500 subscribers, so please, please, please help me get there. That giveaway is a subscriber's choice, so the winner of the subscriber, I take into account what it is that they would like to see in the giveaway, um, providing that it is within reason. And I will see you guys later. Loves and likes ya. Bye!